Thanksgiving is just around the corner, and in this episode of Flea Market Rescue, we're going to give thanks. We're going to give thanks to people who donate their shirts to the Salvation Army and for scraps of wood that we have lying around the house. And we can't forget the things we found in the trash. So yes, today let's give thanks for all those things because we're going to turn them into something awesome. So if you're ready to do some DIY Thanksgiving crafts, then let's dive in. One quick note before we get started though, if you're new to my channel, I just want to welcome you. My name is Kelly Sherry. I do a lot of home decor makeovers and furniture flips. I also take you along shopping with us as my mom and I go to garage sales, flea markets, and thrift stores. So I hope that you'll subscribe to my channel and ring the bell. That way you'll get notified every time I post a new video. So while I was out at the thrift store, I came across this shirt. Love the colors in it and I found a few other ones. All right, so today I went to the thrift store and I picked up these three shirts. This one has a pretty orange and kind of beigey color. This one here is almost like, well, it's like a tannish yellow, like a natural wheat kind of color. And then this one here, it has red. Now, I am gonna make corn with these. This is gonna be more like an Indian corn. This will be like the regular kind of corn. And this is just gonna be like, you know, something that just blends these two together and makes it look very um, Thanksgiving and harvest time. So first you're gonna start off drawing your pattern. This is basically an oval that we're drawing out. Now, when you get towards the end, you're gonna to have to keep an opening. So we're gonna make two little slots there. That's where you're gonna be able to stuff. Now let's go ahead and cut our pattern out. I'm gonna take this shirt here and we're gonna double up the fabric like so. Now, it really doesn't matter what side you use because the pattern's the same on both. Just double up that fabric and place your pattern on there that we drew. And you just use some chalk. Doesn't have to be perfect. And just go around. And that's where you're gonna sew. Now on the bottom, you're gonna wanna leave an opening. That way you're able to turn this and stuff it. So I'm gonna just draw a couple more and then we'll move on to a different one. Now that we have our patterns drawn out, to make it more manageable, we're just gonna cut these out not completely, just like this. And we can even cut right here too. That way it's just more manageable when you're sewing. So we have two of those. Let's get um, another color here. Let's do that wheat tan color. All right, now we're gonna use this wheat color, almost like a, it has a little hint of yellow, which is nice. And we're gonna do the same thing. Now with this one, you could just use a pencil. You don't need to use chalk with that because it's light enough that we're able to do that. We're gonna cut a few corns from this. All right, so now we have all our corn drawn out and we can make it. All right, it is time to sew these up. We're gonna start at the bottom. And we're gonna sew around our corn line. And don't forget to leave an opening. You're gonna lock it in. 
that's one. We're gonna do the same with the other one. Here, I think this is a better angle that you will be able to see me actually sew. All right, so when you start, we're gonna start at the bigger end. We're leaving it opening so that we can turn this. We're gonna lock in our stitch by pressing that button. And then you're just gonna go all the way around where we've drawn. And then don't go all the way up to here because that will close it. You wanna go a, leave a little opening and lock it in. And that's great. So we're gonna do that with the other ones too. Now we're just gonna cut these out. You wanna cut, again, a quarter inch. And now we're just gonna finish up the red ones that are gonna symbolize Indian corn. So we'll sew those up too, and then we'll stuff them. All right, so we have all our corn here, but we need to turn this. And the best way to do that is with some turning tools. Now, mine have been around for 20 years. Yours obviously will look different, but I definitely recommend them just because they make things so easy. I'm just gonna show you, I'll give you a demonstration here. You would put that in your opening, whether it's like a dowel leg or whatever you have that you wanna turn. And you just kinda of go like this and look how fast it's turned. So that just beats trying to struggle with it. And you just stick your stick in here, kinda get the rest of it. But that was really quick. If, you, if we were trying to turn this ourselves, it would take a little time. We'd have to kinda work at it. Where this, again, you just stick it in the opening. You take the stick they give you and boom, it's already turned. It just makes it so much faster and easier. So we're gonna turn the rest of these here. Polyfill is the only fiber fill that I use. I've used it for over 20 years, love it. It doesn't bunch up. Now I've tried other ones and they just don't even compare. Polyfill is the best. So this is what we're gonna use on our projects today. You can find the polyfill and the turning tools in my Amazon store. I have a link in the description that you can click on and it'll take you there. I used to just paste individual kind of links to the products that I showed in my videos, but now I have it under one roof. I do make a small commission, which allows me to make videos. So anything that you purchase, I would be very grateful for. All right, so now it is time to start stuffing these. I have a little bit of that fiber fill and we're just gonna put that in our opening here. Just wanna work that in. Just keep on pushing that in the hole and then take even a dowel rod or a paintbrush you can use and just push that up to the top and continue doing that until they are full.
So that's one corn and I'm gonna finish the rest here cause I'm sure you don't want to see me stuffing all these. All right, so I have all my corn here and I have some embroidery thread. Um, on these, I'm gonna do this color here to add a little bit more of a yellow accent. And on these, I'm gonna do just like the natural. So I have an embroidery uh, needle here that we're gonna use. We're just gonna get a long enough piece of thread. We're gonna thread our needle. And then what we're gonna do, we're gonna start down at the bottom here. I tied that in a knot, okay? And I'm just gonna weave in and out. Just, it doesn't have to be perfect. You're just making some lines for the corn. You're gonna wanna go around. Again, we're just making lines for this corn here. And I lost the thread. Hang on, you guys. Okay. And if you pull really taunt on this, see how it kind of puckers a little? It kind of looks like corn that way. So just keep going in and out all the way around. Now we don't have to do this all the way down because again, we are making some corn husk and you're not even gonna see the bottom. So this is kind of time consuming if you were to do every single one. So we're just gonna do like halfway. And if you keep pulling taunt, you're gonna make some of those indentions, which again, look like corn. Okay, so that is about halfway. And I'm gonna do just a little going up with it too on the opposite side. That just adds a little more pucker to it. So you're basically just kind of trying to make puckers with it. And then we're just gonna tie this off at the bottom. You can Sew this shut here with your embroidery thread. Again, none of this is gonna be seen because 
we are going to be making corn husk. So I think that looks pretty good. I'm, again, I'm just going to tie this off here. And then you're just gonna cut that off. Okay, so we have one done and I'm just gonna work on the rest here. I bought this at Walmart. This is called Assenberg. It's a little better than muslin because it's thicker and if you notice it has like a texture to it and I just I love Assenberg. I'd rather use that than muslin. Anyway this is going to be like the corn husk so we're gonna take and rip a few strips of that and then we're gonna coffee dye it. All right so our corn is all gathered and I think it looks pretty darn good. We are gonna take this Ossenberg and we are gonna cut some strips. We're actually gonna see how, how much we need here. So we probably would be going like that, which is, all right. So I'm just gonna start tearing some of this. All right, let's see how much. Okay, and I'm gonna cut this and tear that as well. I'm gonna tear this just one more time here. Okay, that actually looks pretty darn good. Cut some of that off. We don't need it that big. This is pretty good. So we're gonna coffee stain these. gonna tear a few more. Actually I can use this now as my guide because that really worked out well. All right, so we basically have all these ripped and they look like corn husk, but they're just a little too white, so we're gonna coffee stain these and maybe coffee stain this a little bit too. We have all these here. We are gonna coffee stain them. I'm using some coffee, instant coffee. We're gonna make this nice and strong. I cut this, this is like a water bottle, just so we had something to put it in. So we're gonna put some heaping. I put two tablespoons in there and I'm gonna put equal amounts of water in there. All right, and now we are just gonna paint this on here. You can even get it on 
our stuff. Now you might want to wear gloves because this really is messy. I'm going to add a little more water. It's a little too much. So that's basically what it looks like when it's wet. We're just gonna go ahead and finish the rest of these. I let mine dry overnight. However, if you wanted to put them in the sun, you could put them in the sun, that would work as well. Okay, so these are all looking pretty darn good. We are gonna let them dry overnight. However, again, if you wanna put them in the sun, you can do that too. All right, it is the next day. Our corn had a chance to dry. And now we're gonna take the husk that we made and we're just gonna wrap that around and we're gonna glue that in place. So you're gonna kind of put that diagonally we're gonna add a little glue right to the bottom here, like so. And then we're gonna wrap it like a little burrito. Yes, we are. But you wanna leave a little like flap down. You don't want to roll the, com the whole thing completely. And then we're gonna follow through with the other side here. Okay, so that is one corn husk done. And we're just gonna work our way through and glue all the rest of them too. All right, so now we have all our ears of corn here. They're all done. Now we need to arrange them in a basket. I picked this basket up at the Goodwill for $2. So we're just gonna take that price tag off here. This is like a really old vintage basket. That was a great price. So we're just gonna arrange our corn in here like we're going to market and we're gonna sell it. So we have all our ears of corn in here. And now I wanna make up a little sign that says ears of corn, 25 cents. All right, so I had these all in the basket. And I thought, you know what, you guys? I think that we just need a little bit more color to these. Even though we coffee dyed them, I do love them because they look primitive, but I just want them to pop a little. So we're gonna use a little of this uh, khaki by Apple Barrel and we're dry brushing that on. We're just, we're not covering the whole thing. We're just simply gonna add a little to it. So you're gonna put your brush in there 
and you're literally dry brushing it on. Like get as much paint as you can off and then hit it. Now that lined it up, but not as much as I would like. So I used this gold looking color and that really did the trick. I used the same technique of dry brushing it on there and it came out so nice. All right, I also wanna finish a little touch with some jute around these. So just take a little piece of jute, kind of tie it in a knot around there. I think this is just gonna add a little more interest to these. I made this cute little chalkboard sign and used my silhouette to do the lettering. The lettering says ears of corn, 25 cents each. I put that on the chalkboard. Then I took the frame that I painted white and distressed it. After it was distressed, then I glued it onto the chalkboard using hot glue. And then all, the only thing left was to add jute for it to hang from. Now, because we have this kind of handle, if I glue this on right now, I'm not gonna be able to get that on there. So I'm gonna glue one side I'm gonna put a generous amount of glue right here. Hold that on there for a minute. And then we're gonna loop that around here. And then we will hot glue that. All right, so let's kind of flip that up. I see some of the paper from when we did the chalkboard paint stuck to it, but that's okay. Now that is super cute, love that. All right, you guys, we're gonna start with a couple scraps of wood here. Um, these are from leftover from projects. I'm gonna cut this so it's flush, you know, and flat. And I just have to show you how cute this is. All right, so I was gonna do this whole scarecrow kind of pattern for this and cut it out and do a brim. But as I got this scrap piece of wood, I started to look at this and I was like, wow, those kind of look like eyes. And I'm like, that kind of looks like a nose. And this looks like a mouth going, whoo. Anyway, then I took the piece of wood that I would need. And I was like, wow, that is super cute. And then I said, you know what? Let's get the shirt out, see how that's gonna look. And I just thought this is gonna look really good together. So I'm gonna change the plans. We're not gonna go with this pattern I drew out. We're actually just gonna use the plank like it is. We're gonna paint the hat. We're gonna paint the brim. We're gonna paint his face. I'm gonna make eyes sort of like this and maybe a nose like this. And we'll kind of go from there. So let's get started. First, we're gonna cut that jagged edge off our previously cut board. This board is clearly too long for our saw, so we're gonna need to flip it over. Perfect cut, now let's assemble this. Okay, so this plank of wood, which is like the head and the body, is gonna sit on a base. Now in order to screw this in, we're gonna have to drill some holes because you don't want the wood to crack. So by drilling a few of the holes through the bottom and then into this, we can easily screw these two pieces together and it'll just work out so much better. So you're gonna to wanna to put your board in the middle 
Let's make sure that this is the middle here. Okay, and now we're gonna drill a couple holes right through the middle. I'm gonna start it off like this. I'm not gonna go all the way through, of course. there. I'm just going to start this off again and then we can go through the board afterwards. Okay, now I'm going to put this up like this. I'm going to drill all the way through the board. Okay, it is through the board, and then that's when we're gonna drill a little bit on the bottom here where it's gonna set. That looks about right. Okay, so now we have it through both pieces. I'm gonna back it out. And we're gonna do the same thing with the other one. But you know what? First, I think I'm gonna secure that side with a screw. That way we have the holes correct. I changed the bit on there. All right, so we're gonna start this screw going through the board. And soon as we see it peek through just a teeny bit, we're gonna line it up with the other board and then proceed to go through. Okay, now you can see the little tip of the screw. So we're gonna line that up with our hole that we just pre-drilled. Can you see that right there? We're gonna put that right here. And then we are gonna drill in, or we're gonna screw this on. I realized you wouldn't be able to see me do that, so I moved the camera back so that you could see. Again, we're taking the head and we're gonna stick that right there. I'm gonna hold these two boards together and then I'm gonna just screw that in. I gotta make sure that's lined up there. And it is. Now, if we had not pre-drilled, it probably would have cracked, but because we pre-drilled, we're fine. You wanna make this as flush as you can so it can stand. Now, that's pretty darn good. We just need to add one more so that this side just doesn't move at all and it's very secure. All right, so now I'm gonna change the bit. I'm gonna put the drill bit back in there and we're gonna drill our second hole that's gonna go through the base and into what is to be the body and the head. Okay, I'm 
gonna back that out. We're gonna change our bit and then we're gonna screw our screw in. Okay, so now this can stand on its own. It's very secure and we can move on to painting and assembling this. All right, so we are gonna paint him a flesh tone color and then we're gonna do his hat like a, um, I don't know, like a straw hat. Okay, so we're gonna do him flesh tone. I'm gonna just put that all on. Now we're just gonna paint everything here. Now I cut out some wood pieces and I think they look really cute. I cut out the nose, I cut out the eyes, some pupils. Now I did make a mouth like this. I thought maybe that could be cute or I don't know, or you know how this has a little spot there. He could be like, oh, I don't know though. So we're just gonna have to see. I'll just play it by ear but we have his facial expressions cut out and now I'm gonna do his hat. I'm gonna paint his nose real quick though because we might as well get that done. We don't need to paint the backside because of the fact that this is gonna be glued on there. All right, and then you know, I don't know which mouth I'm gonna use, but I am gonna do that like a natural too. Because whether we use that one or this one, I don't know. If we use this one, this probably, uh, I probably wouldn't go, I might paint that black. All right, we'll just see. Again, I don't know what mouth to use. All right, so now we're gonna paint his hat. I'm gonna use, um, Khaki by Apple Barrel. And just so you know, I used Americana Warm Beige for his flesh tone. Now we're gonna do a combination of two different ones for his hat. We're gonna do the base coat this, and then we're gonna kind of like do a, I don't know, like a pattern, a check pattern with this one. All right, so we're gonna paint his hat this color here. And then we're gonna do this whole thing too because this is the brim of his hat. All right, so I'm gonna let that dry. While this is drying here, I think we're gonna paint the whites of his eyes and the, also the, the black too. Okay, this is pretty much dry. We're gonna flip this over and do the back as I drop all the pieces. <laughs> okay, we're gonna turn that over. We're gonna do the back and then we're also gonna do the back of this stick too. Now, while that's drying, we could actually flip this up and put some paper down and we're gonna paint the base of him. So I really like this color. It's really complimentary to the clothes we're gonna use. If you remember, I have this here and I think that's gonna go really well. So we're just gonna start by painting this whole base that color.
All right, so now that we have this base painted that color, we're gonna let that dry as well. All right, you guys, so we have this dry, this is dry, and that's dry. Let's finish up the hat. I really wanna do the hat here. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do like a line pattern across there. Take a little parchment paper. And we are gonna add some of that dark that I showed you earlier. It's called Territorial Beige, and it's by um, Delta. All right, so I'm gonna add a little of this onto it. And then we're just gonna tap our brush like this. All right, now we're gonna streak it. Tap our brush a little bit more. And we're just making lines over it. But you don't want to paint the whole thing. You just want lines. Okay. Now that we have that, we're going to do it the opposite way too. And you see how that makes a little pattern? And we're gonna do the same thing with this too. And I'm gonna go the opposite way. And we're gonna do that on the back and the sides. I like how that looks, but we need the face. We need to look at the face here. So these pieces have dried. I have all the pieces here. So we got the nose. And we got the eye. We got the other eye. And then we got the little pupils. We're gonna go in the middle. And again, I still don't know if we're gonna use this or are we gonna use this. I don't know. I guess that's something. He almost looks Amish. I kind of like that. We actually could do something like that too. I'm liking that, you guys. What do you think? Anyway, we're gonna let that dry, that little pattern we did, and then I'm gonna take a little um, dark wax and we're gonna just do our little magic with that. I'm gonna take a little bit of sandpaper and I'm just gonna sandpaper like this. You know, I'm gonna take these off because we don't need those on there right now. All right, so now we're gonna use some of my Annie Sloan dark wax. Now this base, way too bright. When I say way too bright, I mean way too bright. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna kinda go over this a little. So now that we did that, we're gonna tone this down with some wax.
So we're using this type on here. The cap's clogged, so I'm just gonna put my brush in here. Now you wanna make sure that you got it how you want it. Because once it's on there and dries, there's no moving it. So I'm just gonna put uh, some of this type on on the back here. Try to center that in the middle here. And again, if you see any glue, just wipe it up. You don't want any yellow spots. I'm gonna wait till we get the shirt on. Then I know where I should place this because once I put this on there, if the shirt comes up too high, you might not see it. I might have to move the mouth up a little. I don't know. It could be off to the side like he's saying something. I don't know. All right, we'll play around with that in a minute. All right, I'm gonna take the shirt because I kind of want to see where this is gonna go. I'm gonna put the shirt around him. All right, so the shirt needs to come up about that much. So if we put Yeah, we're gonna have to put this up a little. Maybe we go like this. No. Why not? It's got to stay up. Okay, let's try this. Oh, I like that. Okay, this is what we're going to do. We're going to put his mouth a little to the side and glue it. See, you just gotta play around with things and just try different things. So that's how you discover new techniques. About right there. I like that. All right, so now that we got him almost together, you know that we're gonna have a sign on him. We're gonna make sure we have enough room for the sign. We want these sleeves to wrap around. And the sign is gonna say, give thanks. But you know, I have another idea, you guys. I don't know. Do you remember when I got this fence out of the garbage? Oh yeah, we did a project already with a window frame. So what I'm actually thinking is maybe, maybe we use this. I really like that. And then we could just put the sign like on top give thanks, have the sleeves still wrap around. What do you think? I think it looks pretty, pretty cute. 
I think we're gonna use this fence. I really like the fence. So the next thing we need to do is we're gonna have to paint this black. We're gonna paint it like a chalkboard. And again, we're gonna put give thanks on here. So we need to glue the shirt. We need to staple on the fencing. We need to paint this black and put a decal that says give thanks. And then he should be done. I love him. I think he's awesome. Good morning, you guys. Okay, our guy is just as cute as he was last night. Now we are gonna glue this shirt down onto him. Okay, so his shirt comes to about right here. So I'm just gonna cut about right there and we're just gonna cut all the way around. All right, so now we've cut the shirt to length and we're just gonna proceed to glue it down. And now our next thing is to take our fencing. All right, so now we want this fencing to be nailed onto here. So it looks like this fencing is too long for our base. If you look, it goes all the way out here. I kind of like that. So I think I'm just gonna cut the ends. I'm gonna cut the ends and we're just gonna have it extend all the way out. I think it looks really cool. All right, so we're gonna cut our fence here. As you can see, this needs to come off, so I'm gonna cut here, and then I'm also gonna cut on the opposite end here. All right, so here's our guy. We're just gonna take our nail gun, and we're gonna nail all this down here. All right, so we're gonna use some of this chalk paint. It's by Rust-Oleum. I've had this can for quite a while, but um, yeah, that's what we're gonna use. All right. I typed out the words, give thanks, in this cool and funky little font, where I took it to the silhouette and cut it out. Now, normally when I do chalkboards like this, I take a piece of chalk and I rub it on there and I really condition this. But since we're putting a vinyl decal on here, I'm not gonna do that because it will not adhere very well. I'll just struggle the whole way through. So I will put this on and then after, we'll go ahead and condition the board with a little chalk. And voila, give thanks. Now I'm gonna go over this with a little bit of chalk. You can do white, you can do yellow, it doesn't matter. And we're just gonna kinda, like I said, I normally do this beforehand, but this would never really stick well. I'd be struggling the whole time. And then you just take a paper towel. And that looks more like a chalkboard. We're gonna wet down our paper towel and just go over the lettering just so it doesn't have like that cloudy look and then do a once over onto the sign and it's gonna look great. That'll help them stand out a little more. And your board is still looking like a chalkboard. All right, so we want our sign to be right in here. I want these arms to, to kind of go around. All 
and I have some jute, so I'm gonna just measure out how much I think I'm gonna need for this to go around. So probably about this much. We're gonna tie that in some knots. Do at least two or three knots so that it has something to hang on to when we're gonna glue it. So that's gonna be back here. We're gonna glue that to the back here, but I'm just kind of getting the size of what we need. And that looks like it's gonna hang well there. So we're gonna tie a knot right here too. And again, do a few so it real, that hot glue will have something to hang on to. So you wanna put a nice generous amount of glue and put your knot right into it. You can hold that there. Once you feel like it is really attached, once the glue dries, it will be really you know, secure. So we're gonna do that. Same thing with the other side here. We're gonna put a generous amount of glue. And then we're gonna stick that to it. Now it looks really taut, but it's not. It's gonna actually go up like this, so we're good. Just wait for those to dry like this is in there pretty good here. And then we'll flip it over. Well, first off, let me just cut this little end off here. We got a little too much. So we're gonna flip our sign over, and then we're gonna put that over fence post so that it'll just hang and then if you don't want to hot glue his sleeves down you don't need to maybe you want to swap out the signs but what I'm gonna do is just tack it down because I like that <laughs> Is he not a cutie patootie or what? The wood pattern for him will be in my Etsy store this weekend. And next week kicks off DIY Christmas. We've been working on a lot of great products for you. We have an awesome video and you're not going to want to miss it because we have a lot in store for you. And while we're giving thanks, I want to let each and every one of you know that I'm thankful for you. Thank you so much for watching Flea Market Rescue. Thank you for supporting me. And I want to wish you and your family a happy Thanksgiving. Well, that's it for this episode of Flea Market Rescue. If you like this episode and you want to see more episodes, make sure to subscribe to my channel and ring the bell. I'm Kelly Sherry, and this has been Flea Market Rescue.